From time to time, I like to use my treadmill here for cardio training, for which I obviously use a higher speed. And while running and thinking about life and all that good stuff, I slowly started to realize that such a treadmill is in some ways kind of dumb. What I mean is that we utilize electrical power from our outlets to move the treadmill. And all I'm doing on the treadmill is running, which is pretty much also a waste of power and energy. So I was wondering whether it would make more sense to basically push the treadmill by myself, to not only get a decent workout, but also to produce electrical power along the way, which I can then use to power and charge all sorts of things. So is such a generator conversion with a treadmill even possible? How much energy can I produce this way? Would I recommend it to you to try out as well? Or is this whole idea just stupid? Let's find out. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, where you can order 3D printed parts as well as PCBs that come with free component assembly service for a super low price. And now they even launched their global sourcing service that connects their PCB assembly with big component suppliers like DigiKey, Mauser or Arrow. So feel free to try the SMT service out today and don't forget to grab some SMT coupons while you're at it. First off, let me tell you that my treadmill is really nothing special. On top, we got a control panel with display and buttons that through the help of a connector on the side connects to a bigger lower compartment in which I assume is the motor. So my first action was to get the lid of this compartment, which was super easy to do and revealed the power electronic system consisting of a motor and driver board inside. I think it is pretty easy to grasp how the motor moves the belt, but what was not 100% obvious was with what kind of motor we are dealing with. To find that out, I peeled off its label, and what was written on there were some good news, but also some bad news for the generator modification. According to its model number and some digging on the internet, I found out that we're working with a permanent magnet DC motor. This is great, because like the name implies, a DC motor not only requires a DC voltage to power it, but it also outputs a DC voltage when used as a generator which makes it very easy to power DC loads. The power rating of the motor should also theoretically be enough to power lots of different appliances. But here comes the problem that the motor works with 220 to 240 volts DC, which means it will probably also output a higher voltage when used as a generator, and that might make the DC voltage transformation a bit more difficult later on. But before getting to that, I wanted to have a closer look at the driver electronics and simply measure a couple of things to properly understand the working principle of my treadmill. So I firstly freed the board from its wires in order to inspect the most important components on there and finding out what they are. And after having a basic idea of what components were on the boards, I came up with my own simplified circuit theory which goes something like this. On the inputs, we got the usual 230 volts AC mains voltage, which firstly gets rectified and smoothed out with capacitors to create a stable 325 volts DC voltage. This DC voltage then for one gets converted down to a stable 5 volts to power the control electronics, like a microcontroller, which receives a signal from the control board on top that tells it how fast to spin the motor. The microcontroller does so by increasing or decreasing the duty cycle of a PWM signal applied to a gate of a MOSFET that sits between the motor and the 325 volts DC. So yes, there is no stepping down to 220 to 240 volts like the motor would love it. Instead, I think they're just limiting the duty cycle to get a maximum average of 240 volts but maybe my theory could also be pure fiction. There's only one way to truly find that out, and that is by adding some connector points to the boards and then having a look at them on the oscilloscope. 
And yes, as you can see, the MOSFET applies close to 325 volts DC to the motor with a varying duty cycle. That comes with a maximum value, just like I predicted it. Awesome! And here we can also see the data signal I was talking about. Which means we now have a good understanding of how the motor and electronics work together in, well, motor modes. Now to get a feeling for generator modes, I simply hooked up the motor wires to my oscilloscope and started pushing on the treadmill. For which I would also recommend selecting the biggest gradients. And as you can see, without much effort, I was able to generate above 100 volts. Which is a pretty scary voltage level. But keep in mind that this is without a loads. Because if I for example use this short 24 volt LED strip as a load, we can not only observe that the treadmill can easily power it, but also that the voltage dropped down quite a bit. The reason is that with my treadmill setup and human power, I can only create a certain maximum amount of electrical power, which is of course the multiplication of the voltage and current. If I draw no current without a load, then the voltage will be high. But when I draw more current, the voltage has to decrease because, like I said, we got a maximum power limit. And fun fact, you can also easily destroy your loads if they're not rated for the power you output with your generator. So another example would be this 24V LED spool, which pretty much acts according to the just described theory, meaning that the voltage dropped even more because it requires more current. And oh boy, this load was actually a bit too much for me on this treadmill. And in case you're wondering, using proper shoes does not really help with increasing the grip and thus output power. But anyway, to measure a proper output power value, I hooked up my energy multimeter next, whose value fluctuated quite a bit, but a maximum output power of around 10 to 20 watts should be possible. Sadly though, that is not a lot, considering we would have to use this treadmill for 50 hours straight to generate 1 kilowatt hour of electrical energy, which in Germany costs around 30 cents. So this setup is definitely not cost effective, but maybe a fun gimmick for charging your smartphone while working out was my next thought. And to do that, we of course need stable 5 volts, which I will get with one of these. A buck converter that can take 10 to 90 volts on its inputs and outputs 1.2 to 36 volts. So after fine adjusting its output voltage to 5 volts by powering it with my Labbench power supply, I connected a chopped up USB cable to its outputs and firstly tested this setup whether it could charge up a smartphone. Which it successfully did even with quick charge enabled. So time to connect it all to the treadmill and giving it a try. And truth be told, this worked out better than I expected. First off, nothing blew up because of the high input voltage limit of 90 volts of the converter. And what was also great was that I was able to charge up the phone without interruption with 10 watts. The only real problem was, which is not easily visible in the recordings, that the force which I had to push with constantly changed due to the energy spikes required by the buck converter. So yes, it took some time to get used to, which is why I would instead recommend charging up a battery which can later be used to charge the phone. The simple reason is that the battery draws constant power from the generator, which makes pushing way easier. But either way, I have to say that I'm kind of disappointed with my experiment results because neither does the treadmill generator offer good workouts, nor do I get to create lots of electrical power. And let's not forget that messing with such a high voltage can be dangerous. So no, I would not recommend trying this out with your treadmill at home. With that being said, thanks for watching and I hope you learned something new. If so, consider supporting me through Patreon. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time.